My name is Shaji Kumar, an Associate Professor of Medicine at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. What I would like to do today is to talk about um, the article, uh, Recent Improvements in Survival in Patients with Light Chain Amyloidosis and the Importance of a Risk Score um, in these patients, which is appearing in the January issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In essence, what we have done in this study is to look at how patients with amyloidosis have fared over the past uh, 30 years. We also wanted to identify groups of patients where we did not see any significant improvement over time in order to focus our energy uh, to improving the outcome of these patients. So what we were able to find in our study was that over each of the 10 years um, in the past, during the past 30 years, the survival of patients with light chain amyloidosis has steadily improved. As you all know, amyloidosis is not a very common disease. Um, it is characterized by uh, deposition of um, amyloid fibrils in different organs in the body which um, interferes with their function and in, it can be life-threatening in a large proportion of patients uh, in, uh, with this diagnosis. The several things have changed over the past, um, especially over the past uh, decade in terms of treatment of this disease. Most of these improvements have been translated from the field of multiple myeloma, which is a related disease, again characterized by increasing plasma cells in the bone marrow, but not without, not with the uh, type of organ infiltration with the amyloid fibers that we see in amyloidosis. However, many of the treatments that we have um, developed in the field of um, uh, multiple myeloma has been used in the field of um, amyloidosis as well. Uh, because the, the purpose of treatment in amyloidosis is to try and decrease the number of plasma cells that makes the amyloid fibr um, or secrete the light chain that makes the amyloid fibrils. So we felt that over time um, uh, the new treatments as well as increasing use of uh, stem cell transplantation uh, should have improved the outcome of this patient. So we uh, set about uh, doing the study looking at the large number of patients um, uh, over 2,000 patients uh, with uh, amyloidosis that had, uh, who had been seen at Mayo Clinic over a 30-year um, period. We divided these patients into three groups uh, over, a, over a decade each, and in each decade, especially the last decade, there was a significant improvement in their overall survival, which was very encouraging. However, we also found that a, a significant proportion of these patients would die within the first one year of the diagnosis. Uh, almost 40 percent of patients and we really did not see a significant decrease uh, in the proportion of patients dying during the first one year after diagnosis over these three decades uh, which in, of course was uh, quite disappointing. Now that raised the question that we actually have to um, uh, do something different with these patients but in order to do something different with these patients, we also had to identify these patients ahead of time, at the time when they are diagnosed with the disease. So we set about looking at the different laboratory parameters uh, that these patients had at the time of the diagnosis and tried to come up with uh, some uh, we, um, laboratory measurements that would um, identify at least a good proportion of these patients who are likely to die within the first year of diagnosis. Now um, there have been previous publications from our group who, which have shown that um, elevated markers of heart dysfunction such as troponin and NT-proBNP can be very powerful prognostic markers. We have also previously shown that uh, uric acid, uh, which is a simple blood test, can also be used to identify patients who are at high risk of dying from this disease. So we actually looked at a, s a large number of uh, laboratory uh, parameters um, in these patients trying to identify which ones would be most reliably predict the, the high risk of someone dying in the first year of diagnosis. We came up with three measurements, um, all of which have been described before, uh, such as the uric acid, the NT-proBNP, and the troponin. And by utilizing these three lab measurements, we could actually um, develop a scoring system which um, identified over 80 percent of the patients who uh, were likely to die uh, within the first one year of diagnosis. Now we develop the scoring system using the using patients um, who were seen prior to 2006 and then took the same scoring system and used it in a group of patients who were seen since that time and validated uh, these findings confirming that this is a tool that could potentially be used in the clinic. 
So what does it mean for the patients? I think um, the one is obviously the encouraging finding that the survival of patients have improved over time uh, with this uh, deadly disease. The second, which I think uh, the more important thing is that we can actually try and identify patients who are at the highest risk of dying early and um, put them on clinical trials, specifically trying to minimize the toxicity of the therapy, but at the same time trying to maximize the efficacy by judicious combination of the different drugs that we have. So where does this take us forward? As I said, we need to um, uh, develop new strategies for treating these patients. Um, I don't think every patient with amyloid can be treated the same way. Um, the ability to identify the patients at highest risk of dying will allow us to develop specific, specific regimens or treatment uh, uh, protocols um, which can then be applied to this group of patients. The, the takeaway message of this um, article is, one, patients are living longer with this disease. Uh, which is a testament to the fact that we have better um, uh, approaches to treatment including new drugs and possibly also a more um, uh, intelligent use of uh, treatments like stem cell transplant which can be very effective but at the same time can also be dangerous for some of these patients who are at high risk of dying. Um, second, um, we have been able to uh, develop the scoring system which should be used in the clinic to identify these patients um, and treat them in a different fashion than we typically do. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.